Hi everyone, welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. Today it's a bohemian style bracelet. Oh my goodness, I've got so many techniques in this. You are going to love seeing all these different ways of finishing. What is bohemian, some people will ask. Generally it involves organic beads, it involves matte finishes, sometimes tassels, things that represent a free spirit. So think of that in your bohemian. Think of antique metals, think of organic beads, and um, leather and all that good stuff. Oh, things that are sustainable, wonderful stuff. Let's go on this. First of all, we're gonna start with this strand, which I have done on a one and a half millimeter leather, and I figured you didn't need to see me stringing those beads on there. I just wanna show you the techniques to finish this. So I've already got these strung on. I've already finished one end. We're gonna finish this end so you can see how I did it. And this is a one and a half millimeter leather, and I've used a little bead stopper here to keep everything from falling off while I'm working on it. <laughs> and we're going to add this fold over ending. It's a little antique brass little gizmo and it looks like, let's see, a little letter U. There we go. With a tooth in the middle to hold on to your leather. Just a little le letter, letter U. And we're going to put the leather into that U. I'm going to put it down where I want it. Don't make it too tight. If a little bit of this nice purple leather shows, Great, no worries, but don't get this too so tight that it can't bend and move. So I'm gonna loosen that up even a little bit more because I think it's a little tight. There we go, so it can be flexible. So now that I've got it in that spot, I'm going to leave the leather long so I have something to hang on to. It's a bit of a challenge to hang on to everything. And what I have to do is fold the sides down and I'm going to use my chain nose pliers. They can be bent chain nose or regular chain nose. I'm going to squeeze them together, try and get one side folded down, and get the other side folded down basically at the same time. Folding, squeezing. Oh, put on my good glasses. Oh, I see better with the good glasses on. Yay. Get that baby folded down. And you may want to choose to put some glue on there as well. I can usually get that folded tight enough that I don't need glue. Fold that over, there we go. And it is bohemian style. Bohemian style tends to be, like I say, free-spirited. It's not rigid and hard and structured and, and perfect. Yeah, a little bit of wonkiness is good. It's one of the nice things about it. For people who want to resell it, generally your labor costs are a little bit lower because you don't have to be perfect. And uh, the cost of materials can be a little lower too. So, And it is so popular and trendy, it should sell great. Okay, now that I've got that folded in there and it's nice and tight, I'm going to take my nippers and cut off the extras leather. Just like that. Come out. There we go. So there is one strand that begins this rather complex bohemian style bracelet. Push that a little tighter, a little smoother. Don't want to catch it on anything. There. There's one. Let's do the next one. The next one I think I want to do this shell one. Okay, again, I've pre-strung it because I'm telling you, these shells are super thin. These are scallop shells, so from sea scallops, and they're really thin little coins, and also a sustainable product, and these are natural. These are the colors they are. They're really pretty, beautiful, soft colors, great for bohemian style. I'd sure love to see what you guys are all making when you think bohemian, because it's so popular. I bet some of you are making them now. So I pre-strung these with a few little gold beads, little antique gold in there, and I've pre-strung them. And I've also, one of the things I'm doing while I'm doing this is I went and pre-checked to make sure that my strands are the same length. So as we go along, 
keep looking and make sure your strands are the same length, something at least close. We can adjust a little bit as we move along. But, and again, we don't want this too tight, but I'm going to use yet another type of ending on this one. I have to remember which ending goes on which one. Ah, oh, this little guy. This is a crimp tube. And that center portion there gets smooshed flat to hold this in place. I don't want it too tight. And if a little bit of leather shows, that's okay. I'm going to cut this down so there's just a little bit of the leather left. Don't let anything go. That's when it gets a little tricky. I'm going to put the little tube over the top. Now, a lot of people would also use glue. I don't feel I need glue, but don't feel bad if you want to. And I'm going to use chain nose pliers again, but notice that these are my straight chain nose pliers as opposed to my bent chain nose pliers. I honestly, I have broken these bent chain nose pliers because it's a little bit more pressure on the tips and we don't want that. So I'm gonna use these chain nose pliers. They're a little tougher. So I'm gonna go right there where that leather ends and I'm gonna squish that middle part. Squish, and then I turn it over and I squish the other way as well with a mighty heave-ho, and then I check to make sure it's sturdy. Good, good, good. And there we have it. If you discount the amount of time it took me to string all those darn little scallop beads, pretty quick and easy little finishing right there. That's strand number two. Ooh, put it over there. Next one, horn beads. These are made out of a cow's horn. So they're really organic, they're handmade. So there's lots of different shapes and sizes within a strand. In fact, there's so much different size and shape within a strand. These two are actually made with the same product. So if you order our horn, horn beads, you'll find that there's different colors, different shapes, different hole sizes. They're quite variable. So be aware of that. This is going to be using the same type of ending as the last one I showed you. This crimp end, except it's bigger because on this one, I used a bigger leather. This is the one and a half millimeter. This was the half millimeter. This is one and a half millimeter. So I'm going to use a bigger crimp end. This one's actually even bigger than I need, but it'll do. And I'm going to do the same thing. Not too tight. I don't care if the leather shows a bit. I'm gonna cut this off with just enough room for the crimp, maybe a little bit more. And being very careful, I don't lose those things I spent so much time stringing for you. <laughs> I'll put that crimp end on. How's your dexterity going out there? I know if you're old enough for me to remember my references to the hippie days, you're like me, you're a seasoned citizen. <laughs> and sometimes the dexterity for these little things is a challenge. Keep working on them because the more you work your hands, the better, longer they'll last. Here we go. So I'm going to just squeeze down in the middle, just like I did on the other one. And I have to admit, these are made out of brass. It takes a mighty squeeze. You've got to have some good hand strength. All right, so I crushed that really, really good using my straight chain nose pliers. Check it, make sure it's sturdy and strong. There we go. Woo! We got three done already. Only five more to go. But we're using all these different techniques. Like the techniques you like, use them. You could use this same technique on all of these. But I want to show you some more, some more different kinds of things you can do. Here's our other horn bracelet, the other horn strand using antique brass and horn. I've got yet another finishing technique. This is kind of the same thing, uh, except that it's got a swivel on the top. So if you've got a necklace or something, you want to avoid it twisting and, and, and uh, getting twisted. These swivel clasps are awesome. They're one of my favorite things to use is a swivel clasp of some type. Now this one could get crushed in the middle too, or you could glue it on. In this case, we're crushing it. I like to crush. Okay, so same thing. Cut it off at the length you want. Don't make it too tight. Too tight will make your bracelet not very mobile. So I'm cutting that off, hanging on to everything being careful not to let anything go. Slip on that crimp end. How many of you really do remember the uh, hippie days? I made love beads in seventh grade, so I qualify. I still have them even. There we go. I think the Bohemian style is a lot more sophisticated than, than the hippie days really were. 
I also want to know, what do you think? I've been told that bohemian generally means you should be using matte beads, organic colors, not the bright neon colors. But I don't find that's true. I see lots of bohemian style stuff with bright colors. What do you all think? And that's strand number four. Now those four strands make this bracelet. So let's go ahead and put this bracelet completely together so you can see it all. So we've got our four strands. And I'm going to use a four strand slide lock clasp. These are so neat. We have them in lots of different metal finishes and lots of different numbers of loops. This is a four strand. We have them in two, three, five. I think we even have them in seven. And they work by just pulling apart like this, which to me is an easy way to put on a bracelet. Well, easier than most. Not as easy as like magnetic class, but these are pretty cool. In fact, I happen to be wearing one of those on my bracelet today with a different clasp with a different finish. And what is that, five strands? So yeah, these are really great clasps. I love them. Uh, okay, so let's add these on. And what I did for adding these on or just jump rings. But the nice thing is, if you didn't get your, le your um, bracelets all exactly the same length, you can modify this with a jump ring or two. So let's say one's a little too long, um, use a smaller jump ring. One's a little too, too short, add a couple of extra jump rings. It's a great way to get your lengths all the same. In fact, if you look at this neck, this bracelet that's already been made, you can see they're not all perfectly the same length. And that's okay, because when you put it on your wrist, it looks great. Don't worry about it. After all, the Bohemian style is sort of free thinking and free style, and it all works. So I'm adding some jump rings. I'm just going to use one jump ring. Um, on that bracelet, there's a bunch of jump rings. But I hope I made them close to the same length so I don't have to do so much adjusting. But if I do, I will. No worries. And if I don't even want to put them in the same order or I want to braid them along the length or, or like I said, if you just wanted to use the same te finishing technique on each strand, it's all good. Bohemian style, let it be free, casual, and yet have you watched, have you been watching the red carpets and stuff? All the stars are wearing this. Oh, look at that, I did pretty good. So I'm checking my length. Pretty good, looks like I probably should have an extra jump ring on that one. Doesn't it look a little bit short? It is a little short. Okay, cool. So let me take the other half of this. And we'll attach this one with one of the regular big jump rings. I like these oval jump rings too because you see the, the gaposis is on the side. And so it's very unlikely that your end of your bracelet is going to slip through that gap because it's on the side instead of on the ends where it's likely to go. I want to fall out through that hole. I want to fall out. No, this is the one we want to add another one. Let's skip that. I got this opened. Let's go to the third one. Okay, this one, I think, let's look at it. I think, I think, I think, if we use two of those big ovals, I think that'll look good. What do you think? You agree? I'm supposed to be the expert, but you know, all the experts in the world will tell you, the more you know, the less you know. So you just want to keep on learning. And I, I hope you're joining me to keep on learning with me. We just keep working this until we are experts, which will never happen. <laughs> okay. You can call me an expert if you want. I just say I'm a student who knows a lot of stuff already. I'm going to use two jump rings there. Let's see how it looks. Oh, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah, that extra jump ring, I think. Pretty good. Okay. 
Let's add the fourth one. Fourth strand. And that will be one bracelet in our set of three, the biggest and most complex one. Ta-da! Ah, oh, pretty good. I like the lengths. They're not all the same, but that's okay. You can see we've got different lengths, but when I put it on, there. Ta-da, one bracelet. Let's do another one. Yeah, woo! All right, let's do this one. This one looks simple, but it's got a little trick to its finishing techniques too. Yes, indeed. So it's using the 0.5 millimeter leather, which is leather is awesome. It comes in all kinds of different dimensions. Just saying. Um, but I'm going to use about, oh, I don't know, about 10 inches of that. I'm just going to cut this off. Oh, I like to cut things at an angle because it makes it easier when you're trying to put it into narrow openings like bead holes. Or, in this case, it's going to be an AccuGuard. Aha! Uh -huh. I hope you're familiar with AccuGuards. I love AccuGuards. They're mostly designed to prevent um, abrasion with your um, beading cable or your beading wire to prevent abrasion on the end, but I'm going to use it on this leather. How's that? This is a rather large AccuGuard. They come in different sizes and they come in different um, finishes. So this is an antique brass, of course, and I'm going to put the end of that leather through one side of my AccuGuard. It just barely fits. I'm glad I cut that little angle. I'm going to pull that through about halfway then I'm going to go back through the other side. And pull that through. Ta-da. And now this AccuGuard is going to be protecting this little 0.5 millimeter leather. 0.5 millimeters, not really strong leather. I could break this with my hands if I pulled hard. So that is a little protective thing. And we've got these two strands coming off of it, which means double the strength. And I'm going to string it. In fact, I've got one that I've already strung halfway around. So here's one that's halfway around. Here, look, at we've got a whole one. We've got a half a one, and we got one I'm building. Let's do it. Uh, I'm using this little filigreed bead right here. And I have to get both strands through the hole there. So it's a little tight, but it can be done. Especially if I do it one strand at a time. So I've got one in there already. Let's go with the other one. There we go. So I've got both of those through there. String that on. Oh, now see, we've got quite a large wide opening here. I'm actually going to squeeze the ends of my AccuGuard together to get those pieces of leather a little closer to each other. That just looks nicer, I think. That's all my opinion, though. What's your opinion? How do you like your bracelets? How would you like that to be? Um, when you, if, if you decide to make anything like these ones I'm showing you today, do it your way. You know, that's the whole idea, the creativity. I want to show you the techniques and give you the idea and then take off and have fun with it. Make your thing. It is all about the freedom of spirit, all that bohemian yumminess. There it comes through. Pull it through. And one more of those tubes. These tubes go on nicely. These are fun. And it's kind of fun working with these bigger hold things too. And let's see, and one more of the filigree bead. Put one piece of leather through and then put your second piece of leather through. It's a little easier that way. So we get those three on there. And on this end, we're going to repeat this little clasp that we used before. Only we're going to put it on both of them. So I'm going to not too tight, let everything be free. I'm going to trim that and that. And I'm going to put one of these little guys on here. I'll take my heavy duty 
the chain of those pliers and give it a squeeze. And another one. Put it on there. I don't want, it does have a hole on this end, but don't make it go too far. It looks better if the leather isn't showing on the other end. And then give that one a squeeze. And then I give them another squeeze because that's who I am. Squeezy, squeezy. And I check both of them. Not going to come off of there, are you? No. No, I won't come off. No. Okay, good. And we're ready to finish this bracelet. Now, this center portion, this nifty little filigree, it actually comes flat like this. But I just gave it a little bend. It's um, an inexpensive metal. It's not full brass. So it's easy enough to bend with your fingers. Just a gentle little curve to make it fit more like um, a wrist. More, more, a little bit rounded. And I'm going to use my smaller jump rings. And this is another one of my tricks. See, I didn't use an oval this time. I'm using a round. And one of my tricks for rounds because like I say, when, when a jump ring fails, and if you're a jewelry maker, you know it's jump rings that always make things fall apart. When a jump ring fails, it's because a cord slipped through that little gap in the jump ring. So I use double jump rings because the possibility of that jump ring lining up perfectly so that the cord can go through both gaps on the jump rings is very unusual. So I love to use double jump rings if my loops and holes are big enough. And this one's a little tight, but I think I can do it. Make sure when you put the jump rings on that they are parallel to each other and they haven't looped inside of each other. That was a, a problem I didn't know you could have until <laughs> somebody I was teaching did it. And I went, oh, no, no, no. They have to be parallel. Not inside of each other, not looped together. Parallel like that. So that's a super strong jump ring closure there. And on the other end, oh, looky here. We've got another one of those slide lock clasps. This is a two strand. So how handy is that little clasp? I love it. Let's see. We use the little jump rings again. A couple more of those. Oh, looky, here's one that's already open. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> Save myself a little bit of work. Remember when you're opening jump rings, so always twist them open. Twist them open like you're going to eat an Oreo. Don't pull them open like you want to eat a hamburger. Twist it open. And I could probably use double jump rings here too, but you're probably tired of watching me open jump rings, so we'll just let it be. Let it be. And there is bracelet. I'm going to put it on. <laughs> Using that nifty slide lock clasp. Sometimes I look at that with my long fingernails, I can get in there. <laughs> bracelet number two. OK, one more. We're going to use a different closure again. This time, I'm using this three-strand closure, so because I've got three strands of leather, and I'm using the, um, the thicker leather, the two millimeter, because we're showing the leather this time. We want to see it, so it's part of the design. So I've already done two strands, because clearly all I did here was just stringing. So I just strung those on. Here's my third strand. I will show you how I strung it. So this third strand will go through the third hole in this spacer bead. Spacer beads are great for keeping things parallel. So the third hole there, I try and line that all up nicely. And then I have no beads in this segment here at all. So I just go through the next hole of my spacer beads. And this one's kind of about an interesting stringing technique. It's kind of cool. Try and keep everything parallel as we go. This one, I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these large hold antique brass faceted beads. Seven. There we go. Keep these all parallel. 
as we're building, go through the next spacer bar. Try and keep all these things parallel because at the end they'll all come together nicely. And we've got to do seven more beads here. Seven. Looking good. Go through the next spacer bead. Spacer bar. It truly is a bar. All coming together here. And notice I've used this little uh, bead stopper here to keep my beads from falling off while I'm working. I'm going to take my chances and take it off now. Go through there. Get this all lined up straight. Looking good. Now on this end, we're going to be applying this three strand clasp and this does have a crimping ability in that I could flatten these little flat, little narrow bars here. There's a hole, a slit there that allows that to happen. But in this case, we're going to glue it. Uh, I think it's a little more attractive when you glue this one. But I also want to, to check it for length. Yeah, by the time I add a clasp, it's going to be just right. Check this for length. And I'm going to nip all of these off. I'm going to got to be ready to go because I'm going to use a DEVCON 5-minute epoxy. So we nip these off at the same length but at an angle so they have that little wedge shape. It's going to make it easier for me to put everything into that class B guy at the end. End bar, I guess it would be called. Sometimes the terminology in jewelry can be kind of challenging. Okay, we're all straight. We're beautiful. This one needs to come up a little bit. There we go, straight and beautiful. See, already I don't feel like it's really straight. Okay, these are gonna go into there, and I need to mix up some glue to do that with. So, I've taken a piece of wax paper and my De DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. This is a great product, I love it. Take off my lid, put it where it's safe and it's not going to mess up anything. I'm going to squirt out just a little bit. The way this tube works, because it's got a little syringy end, you can squirt out just a little bit and try and make equal amounts. I put a little more pressure on the left side, a little more pressure on the right to make two little drops that are the same size or very close. And when I put the end back on, be very careful. You put it back in the same orientation you took it off. If you rotated it, you uh, can harm your, your, your glue because the two part A and part B start mixing. So make sure you put them on the same direction it took, you took it off. And then a toothpick. And this will sit here all day if I just left it like that. But when I start mixing the two parts together, that's when I get the gluing effect. It's a five minute epoxy, so it it cures in five minutes. It'll be fully cured in like a couple hours, I suppose, but in five minutes, it's, it's good, it's sticky, it's done. Okay, so I feel that's mixed enough. I'm going to put some of this glue in each of these little ends into the torpedo tubes. Now, when I push the leather in, it's going to push in some more, push it in further, and that'll be just fine. It doesn't take a lot. So then I asked my friends, anybody need anything glued? Because I got a little bit left over. I'm actually going to put it over here where I'm not likely to put my elbow in it. <laughs> now, carefully, I am going to slip these three ends into those tubes. One, two, come on. Without losing my spacer bars. And that can be a challenge. There. Here we go. Let that cure for about five minutes. And we can put the clasp on the end. I'm going to use yet another type of clasp just to make sure you have seen 
so many types of things you can't decide which one to use. <laughs> this time I'm going to use this neat clasp. It's just a lobster claw, very familiar. Um, but the nice thing is that it has a swivel on the end. And we have these in lots of different finishes too. And I love the swivel clasp, they're my favorite. Swivel lobster claw. And I'm gonna use the bigger jump ring because I can. Twist it open. Add the lobster claw. <laughs> it swiveled out of my way. There we go. Put it on there. And notice I did the end that's already cured. And then this end as well. We'll have a uh, jump ring to attach our lobster claw to. And because we haven't had quite full five minutes to cure that baby, I'm not gonna put this one on. Here, I'll put on the one that's already done. So we can have our full set of Bohemian jewelry. And look at all the techniques you learned. Ah, yay, you, go out and have some fun. Keep it free, keep it fun, keep it Bohemian. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and happy beating.